Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's dig into the word. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask for revelation knowledge to dawn upon our hearts. Let words and thoughts from heaven flow freely through me to your people. Let these words and thoughts continue to speak to us beyond today. Let signs and wonders be done in the name of your holy child, Jesus. It's in Jesus' mighty and precious name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. All right. How are you guys doing? I trust you are all well. And um, look to your neighbor and say, it's time for the word. We're going to be learning beginning from this Sunday and for the next two Sundays, well, this Sunday and um, next Sunday for those of us who are not in Nigeria. For those of you in Nigeria, next Sunday is a Grace Festival and I'm going to be, uh, 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 we're going to be having a great time together. So, um, but every other installation of Covenant Light, um, we're going to be wrapping up this teaching. And so those of you in Nigeria, um, you will need to access uh, the concluding part of this message today um, because it will be online. You need to access it, uh, but this coming Sunday is, an, um, is a, a celebration. It's a, it's a grace festival. <laughs> Glory to God. So we're going to be having some amazing praying and teaching and flowing and blessing and impartation so get ready and get set for that we have we have already in this emphasis this last few months we've been focusing on the knowledge every believer needs to have in order to be able to function like they should in the in function effectively in the body of christ in the kingdom of god and we uh, uh, talked about matthew 13 verse 52 matthew 13 when jesus said um, the, 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 he asked them, do you understand these things? They said, yes. They said, well, look, a man, a scribe who understands how the kingdom functions, I'm paraphrasing, is like a man who is able to bring out whatever he wants, whenever he wants it. I'm paraphrasing, but that's what he meant. So, this, uh, we, we have looked at how to use your faith. We have looked at how to know what God is saying to you, how to access divine wisdom. And now we want to look at Praying, because that's another area that you need to know the how to, how to pray effectively. So I'm titling this "Praying to Get Results." Many people just pray. Um, for a lot of people, prayer is like a last resort. Um, you know, somebody told the story one time that he was in, he was caught in an elevator with someone, and the power went out, or something happened, not power necessarily, something happened, the elevator was now, um, they were in trouble, basically, in the elevator, um, and he said, let's pray, and then the person was like, has he come to that? <laughs> you know, for most people, praying is a last resort, praying is when, when you've tried everything else, and then there's no hope, then you pray. And even in that praying, it's not that they are praying to get results. They are praying, hoping that something might happen. Um, a lot of people pray like, uh, like a person picking a, a machine gun and just shooting, you know, just shooting scattered, just hoping that one of them will hit something. <laughs> but you can pray accurately. You can pray, the Bible says, the effectual or effective or accurate, all right? Effectual and fervent prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. So when you bring accuracy together with fervency, you have results, all right? That word uh, uh, makes tremendous power available literally means is it works. Is the, is the Greek word dyna, dynamo. It means to work. It means to, to get results. So effective or effectual or accurate praying with fervent praying get, always gets results. The devil has been successful in separating the two. You have some very fervent prayer, prayer, prayer warriors, very fervent, but not accurate. 
and you have some very accurate, you know, you know the right, you know, the, the different kinds of prayer for the different situations of life, but they just don't practice fervency. But we need to bring it together. Glory to God. The effectual and fervent prayer. So we, we talked a lot about fervency in prayer. Um, fervency does not belong to a ministry. Some of you say, oh, those people, they pray fervently. You know, mountain of fire and miracles. Ah, fervent prayer. Those people, they like to pray fervently. No, it doesn't belong to a ministry. Fervency is supposed to be the way believers should pray. Pray fervently. And then pray effectively. Okay, so let's look at how to pray effectively. Let's begin with the scriptures. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18. Pray at all times. I'm reading the Amplified Version. The older Amplified Version. Pray at all times. On every occasion. In every season. In the Spirit. With all manner. All manner of prayer and entreaty. All kinds of prayer and entreaty. To that end, keep alert and watch with strong purpose and perseverance, interceding in behalf of all the saints, God's consecrated people. Another version says, pray in the spirit always with all kinds of prayer and supplication. To that end, be alert with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So that tells me that there are all there are different kinds of prayer. Pray with all kinds of prayer. Pray with all manner of prayer. So there are different kinds of prayer. Prayer is not like you say uh, uh, football or you say basketball. Prayer is the way you say sports. If I told you, let's go play sports, you would say, which sport? Should we play basketball? Should we play football? Should we play handball? Should we play volleyball? Should we play? Should we run? Is it athletics? Because for each specific sport where we want to play, the rules are different. It's illegal to touch the ball with your hands in football, in soccer, but it is legal to touch it, the ball with your hands in handball or basketball. It is illegal to touch the ball with your legs in basketball. It is legal to touch the ball with your legs in uh, um, football. And so the, the, the rules differ based on the particular game you are playing. The same applies in the area of prayer. When you look at the scriptures, if you don't understand that there are different kinds of prayer, you, if you study the scriptures, you might, you might feel a little bit confused. Because you will find scriptures like Mark 11, 23 and 24. Verse 24 says, Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe you receive and you shall have it. So believe it's done. Believe, it, believe it's done and you shall have it. So even when you don't have it yet in your hand, believe it's done. So if you believe it's done, then you can't go back and be praying again for it. You can't go and say, oh God, yesterday I asked you for a car. Oh God, I didn't see the car. Lord, give me that car. Give it to me, Lord. 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 And because you believe it's done. But right on the other hand, you find scriptures that say things like, ask and keep asking, it shall be given to you. You find scriptures like Jesus telling, uh, giving a parable about a woman who practiced importunity in prayer, who, who went and kept on knocking at the door of the judge until she got an answer. How do you compare both? Should I continue to ask and, and you know, demand and remind God until I see it? Or should I practice Mark 11, 24 and believe it is done? See? But when you understand that there are different kinds of prayer, and there are kinds of prayer where you can pray and continue to ask, and some kinds of prayer where you simply believe it's done. We're going to be learning those things. For instance, you find Jesus praying at the Garden of Gethsemane and saying, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. And but that's but he never prayed that way about any other thing. He never prayed that way about healing. When he was going to 
pray for the man who was blind. He never said, if it's your will, Lord, heal this man. He never prayed that way when he wanted to raise somebody from the dead. He never said, Lord, if it's your will, let Lazarus come forth. He simply said, Lazarus, come up. <laughs> Lazarus, come forth. Talita spoke to the young girl. Talita, come here. Young girl arrives. Spoke to the young man, the, the son of the widow of Nain. Young man arrives. And so you find that different situations call for different kinds of praying. And the different kinds of praying in the life of Jesus required or required the exercise of different rules. Jesus never said it would be your will because he knew the will of the Father was to heal. So the Bible says in, on, in, on every occasion and in every season, in the spirit, pray with all manner of prayers. Pray with all kinds of prayers. So that means that there are different kinds of prayers for different occasions. Now, the different kinds of prayers, let me please qualify this, is not to get God to act. Please understand. Lord, help me, help me explain this. You see, we don't pray different kinds of prayers because God is in heaven saying, if you don't pray the right way, I'm not going to hear you. See, that's not, father, that's not fatherly. And like I always tell you guys, when you understand the fatherhood of God, you can understand scripture. Because Jesus came and brought us the revelation of God as Father. Our Father who are in heaven. Your heavenly Father feeds the birds. How much more will he feed you? Your heavenly Father knows that you have need of these things. He kept on bringing us that idea that God is your Father. And he said, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more your heavenly Father? Jesus brought the revelation of God as Father. And if you want to understand God and his nature, then understand the absolute perfection of fatherhood. It is not fatherly to say that if you don't pray a particular way, then I am not going to hear you. I can't say that to even my kids. I can't say to my son, if you don't come to me and pray saying, oh dear God, oh dear Noel, oh dear Noel, three times, then I'm not going to hear you. In fact, if I know that he needs something, Sometimes I'm the one that will prompt it and say, have you gotten this thing? And he says, no, I said, well, let's go and get it. So what then is the reason why we need to pray effective? You know, I didn't come up with that. The scriptures say that James 5, 16, the effectual, effective and fervent prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available or availeth much, the King James Version says. Let's read that. Let's read that. Some people, you know, sometimes we quote these things. Some people have never read them before. We need to always remember that not everyone has read all of these scriptures we quote. So James just after Hebrews, James chapter 5 and verse 16. It says, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. That word avails much means what? Gets results. So we need to pray effective and fervent prayers. So if you're going to be effective, it means you need to pray the right prayer in the right situation. That's what effectiveness is. Why is that therefore? Knowing that God is Father and He's not waiting for you to pray accurately right, why then do we need to pray accurately? Well, because of the release of your faith. It's difficult to release your faith when you don't pray accurately. Let me give you a very mundane example. Let's say that everyone in church today came in and I promised that Everyone who comes here, transportation will be provided. Transportation will be provided. That was the word. That was the promise that was given. Transportation back home will be provided. Assuming that that was said. And then someone comes to me and says, 
Uh, Pastor Noel, um, you said you were going to provide transportation, so I want to ask you for your car. Now, he can't have faith, he can't release his faith for my car, because I didn't say I would give a car. Yes, I did say transportation, so he's not asking effectively. So, even though he has made a request, he can't receive because he's not operating in faith. He can't have faith for what I didn't say. Remember when we talked about faith? No, no word, no faith. No promise, no faith. You can't really have faith. And you need faith not to get God to give it, but to, to receive it. And if you are not coming from the premise of, if you are not accurately praying, if you are not making that demand based on the revealed will of God or the, the, what the Bible says, Bible talks about you, you asking amiss. It is possible to ask amiss. It, your asking amiss does not affect the giving, but affects the receiving. He said you pray and you, and, and, you, and, and you receive not because you ask amiss. He didn't say you pray and it is not given. You pray, let me get that scripture out. I, I wasn't planning to read that, but once again, let's not... In, in James 4 and verse 3, it says, Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss. You ask wrongly. You don't receive because you ask wrongly. Not that it's not given. You see, the, the, the way you ask is not why it is given. God is Father. His love is why He gives. And He loves you, regardless of how you ask Him. And he wants you to receive it. But you need faith to receive what has already been given. You need faith. So when you ask amiss, either because of wrong purpose or wrong process, when you ask amiss, then you are not able to release your faith. Just like the example I gave you. Let me give you now a more practical, spiritual example. Let's say that a person suddenly, um, you know, was had his landlord show up that morning and say, "Look, you've not paid your rent, and so I'm kicking you out of my house. So get out, go home. Let me leave this place. I'm going to come in the evening, this evening, and with boys, and we're going to throw your things out." And now you have how many, maybe six, seven, eight, nine hours or ten hours for that situation to be resolved. That's an occasion. That's a situation. Pray in every occasion. So you need to pray. But how do you pray? If you pray and say, Father, I am, I, Mark eleven twenty four says, whatever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive, you shall have. And you say, Father, I believe that I, I ask you for 200,000 uh, 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 Naira to pay my rent this month before this landlord comes in Jesus' name. Now, if you pray that prayer, if you pray that way, based on Mark eleven twenty four, can you really believe for that? Here's what I mean. Can you, can you, remember your landlord just left, so you are worried, you are stressed out, you are worried, you are, you are, yeah, the, 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 there's a deadline so there's this fear in you you can you can literally visualize your things outside you're already thinking who am I going to call who am I going to you know talk to about moving my things all of that is going on inside of you can you really release your faith and stand in faith that before that evening the money will show up can you truly do that that's difficult to do. And is there a promise? Do you have a promise that the money will manifest before evening? Do you have such a promise? No, you don't. You have a promise that if you believe you receive it, you shall have it. There's no promise about when you shall have it. That money can come in two weeks from now. That money can come in a week from now. That money can come in five, five, five months from now. But you believe you receive it and the, 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 
the, the kingdom of heaven, the dominion of God goes into operation and that money begins to head towards you in the natural. When it gets into your hand, you can't determine. You cannot determine it will happen in 10 hours. So what do you do? Well, there is a kind of prayer for that situation. And it's called the prayer of casting of cares. First of all, when you cast your cares, it's called the prayer of commitment, which is casting of your cares. First Peter chapter 5 verse 7 says, Cast all your cares on me, on him, for he cares for you. The prayer to roll your cares on God is a prayer of commitment. And two things are happening immediately you do that. When you pray that way, it's easy now to release your faith. You are not releasing your faith that the money has to come in today. No, you just release your faith that God will deal with the situation. That God will handle the situation. Are you getting the difference? It could be that the, and I know this may not be what will happen, but it could be that the landlord will <laughs> have an accident and not even think about you for the next two months. It could be that the landlord suddenly got, gets a call and travels. It could be that the money actually comes in. It could be that a friend calls you at five o'clock and says, I don't know, I've been troubled about you and all that and I'm traveling and I've been looking for someone to come help stay at my place. Uh, um, for the next four years, free of charge, I, I, I'll I be back. I'm going for a, a, a study and I'll be back in four years. But I want someone to look after the house. So I, I, I wanted to know if you don't mind. It could be true anyway, but it's now easy to believe. You see, because while you can't believe the money will manifest, you can believe you have received it, but you can't believe that the money will manifest. Be within 10 hours because you don't have that promise but you can believe that God will take care of the situation because you have a promise for that can you see so now it's easy to release your faith that God will take care of the situation because you have a promise and what's that promise cast all your cares on him for he cares for you so he will handle whatever you cast as a care to him if you get that say I get it that's why you need to understand the ver various kinds of prayer and where they apply and learn to use them. I do not have unanswered prayers. I can actually look at my life and say I don't have unanswered prayers. You know, I at the beginning I talked about how people use prayer like a machine gun, like boop, 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 and hoping eighty percent of their praying hits nothing, doesn't get any result. But once in a while, they hit something. They don't even know how they hit it or why they hit it or how it came about. They just, once in a while, they hit something and like, wow, it worked. Just like a machine gun. You just start spraying bullets all over the place. You will hit something from time to time. But when you know how to use that, that sniper's rifle, pow, the exact thing you are going for, bam, you knock it down. Pow, you knock that down. You knock that down. That's the way prayer should be. Effective, fervent, gets results. I don't have unanswered prayers, personally. And I had kind of heard him make that statement many years ago. And I said to myself, wow, is that really possible for someone to say, I can't remember praying for something and not getting it. I thought that was impossible. We were told then that when you pray, God can either say yes or no or wait a while. But that's a lie from the pit of hell. There's no scripture for that. That's just human wisdom. Nobody can show me scripture where God's answer is, is yes, no, or wait a while. The Bible says, for his promises in Christ are yea, that's yes, and amen by us. So when we say amen, God says yes, no, no, or wait a while. You just, God is always saying yes. God is always saying yes <laughs> to his promises. For his promises, his word in Christ is yea and amen. So if you find a promise here, God has already said yes to it. There's no no or wait a while. Now, you might wait a while to receive the manifestation of it, 
Not be, that's the receiving end, not the giving end. The giving end is instant. Yes, take it. That can I have what's in the fridge? Yes. That can I have, you know, uh, 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 go, can I have the football? Yes. That can I take the car? Yes. It's always yes. As long as it's part of what he has promised you already. His word is yea and amen by us. So, when I heard him make that statement, I said, boy, and I can boldly say that where I stand today, I don't have an answered prayer. I, you know, in my own life. Now, I, I have people I have prayed for or prayed with that didn't get, because when I'm praying, I didn't get what we prayed about, they didn't receive it, not because God, God didn't give it, but they didn't receive it. Why? Because when it comes to uh, uh, praying with someone else, now my faith and their faith uh, uh, need to walk and I need to help them understand the place of faith and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of other factors involved when I'm praying a prayer of in agreement with someone else. But in my own life, personally, praying for certain things in my life, I get an answer. Because of an understanding of the accurate kind of prayer to pray in that situation. So let's let's look at the different kinds of prayer. Um, we're going to see how far we'll go and then we will continue. I have like 10 of them. I'm not sure if we can finish all of them. But we'll go as far as we can. So here's a few of the kinds of prayer you need to know to function effectively. One is praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. Now, because we've talked a lot about praying in the spirit, I won't dwell too much on it. Praying in the spirit is praying in other tongues. Praying in the spirit is praying in other tongues. Praying in tongues is praying in the spirit. All right. The Bible says in in uh, uh, in First Corinthians chapter fourteen and verse two. The Bible says, for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men. So that's praying in tongues, speaking in tongues. He who speaks in tongues does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. He speaks mysteries. So what that means is that when you speak in tongues, you are speaking mysteries. And you are speaking, look at it, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit, so when you speak in tongues, you are speaking in the spirit. So praying in the spirit is praying in tongues. Now, I said that for a reason. What is the value and the place of praying in the spirit? There are so many. Um, that if we start dwelling on all of them, we won't finish today. Where does that apply? Where, 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 where should speaking in tongues apply? Let me give you several. One, when you are looking for wisdom on what to do. We talked about that under wisdom. We said pray in the spirit. But the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter uh, uh, 2 and verse 9. I has not seen nor ear heard neither has entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. He said but these things we speak. Verse 13. Not in words that men's wisdom teach, but in words that the Holy Ghost teaches. So we, uh, verse six of that same first Corinthians two. I just I just read you. I just quoted verse nine and verse thirteen. But verse six says, "For we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, not the wisdom that is of this world that comes to naught, but the wisdom that is from God." So. When you're looking for wisdom and you have prayed like James chapter 1 verse 5 says, If any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of the Father who gives the bread and bread and not. When you have prayed and asked in faith for wisdom, begin to pray in the Spirit. Because that thing that eyes have not seen nor ear, that thing that is a mystery to you right now, will be spoken by you as you pray in the Spirit. So one way, one value of praying in the Spirit and where it applies, the occasion, is when you are seeking direction. Pray in the Spirit. Also, when you have prayed the prayer of faith about anything, for instance, if you pray and ask God for a house or ask God for your business to expand, anything that you can ask for 
as a petition based on scripture. Those things that when you pray, like Mark 11, 24, whatever things you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. If I believe I have received it when I prayed, I prayed and I believe I have received it, then how do I interact, how do I pray about that thing again? What, how do I pray? Well, if you have prayed the prayer of faith about something and believe that you have received it, then the only kind of prayer you can pray, continue to pray about that issue, is the prayer of thanksgiving, which is one of the prayers we're going to talk about, and also the prayer, praying in the spirit. You see, because the Bible says in Romans chapter 4, I'm, I have to quote some of them and not read them because of time, but you need, to, you need to get them, you need to write them down and go study them. Romans 8 and verse 26. Let me open to that one in this particular instance. Romans 8 and verse 26. The Bible says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercessions for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So the Spirit of God prays for you and prays through you. The Spirit of God prays. So when you are praying in the Spirit, the Spirit of God prays exactly what you should be saying in that situation. I'm going to read you the Amplified Translation of this particular verse of Scripture. Um, for some reason, it, is, it seems okay to the Holy Spirit that I dwell on this particular kind of prayer a little bit more. So this is Romans chapter 8 and verse 26 in the Amplified Translation. I want you to pay attention. It will, it's amazing. It says, So too, the Holy Spirit comes to our aid and bears us up in our weakness. For we do not know what prayer to offer, nor how to offer it worthily as we ought. But the Spirit, watch what the Spirit does. The Spirit, when you are praying the Spirit, watch what, what's happening. When you are praying about that car that you believe you have received, and you say, Father, thank you that I have received this car. Thank you because there is no going back, it is done, it is settled, no matter what's happening in the natural, I believe you, and I thank you for it. When you have done that, now, pray in the Spirit. Why? Because when you pray in the Spirit, it says the Spirit himself goes to meet our supplication. Think about this. The Spirit goes, your, your supplication, your prayer has left you and is headed to heaven. The Spirit goes to meet our supplication and pleads in our behalf with unspeakable yearnings and groanings too deep for utterance. Unspeakable yearnings and groanings too deep for utterance. I believe that that's praying in the Spirit. Alright, but when you're praying in the Spirit, the Spirit of God goes to meet your supplication. I want you to understand what that means. So, let me give you another example. Let's say that I'm, I'm praying about business. And I'm saying, Father, I want my business, I, 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 you know, let's say I'm praying about, this is a good example, I'm praying about a job. Father, I want a job. And maybe in the plan of God for me, at this time, I should be a business owner and offering jobs to people. But I'm struggling, I don't have money, so I just want a job, right? So I say, Father, I want a job. You know, and I ask and I believe I receive a job in Jesus' name. So, I have prayed the prayer of faith. I believe I receive it. So, I thank God for it and I begin to pray in the Spirit. Now, the, the supplication I authored was, God, I want a job. That supplication is going up to God. But the Spirit intercepts that. When I start praying in the Spirit, the Spirit of God intercepts that. And why does He intercept it? Because He knows... If you look at verse 27 of that verse, look at why he intercepts it. And he who searches the hearts of men knows what is the mind of the Holy Spirit, what his intent is, because the Spirit intercedes and pleads before God in behalf of the saints according to 
and in harmony with God's will. So the Spirit, watch this, intercedes for you as you are praying in the Spirit in harmony with the will of God. The will of God is that you become the, a business owner. Your request was to get a job, but the Spirit goes to meet your supplication and presents it before God, not what, what is being presented is not, God, I want a job. What is being presented, that your faith for a job is now making to happen, what is being presented, glory to God, is, Lord, open up doors of businesses for this man. Open up doors of businesses. That's what is being interceded on your behalf. That's what is being spoken on your behalf. Open up business doors for this person. And then, you start seeing somebody call you and say, you know what, I want you to design a website for me. And like, oh, okay, let me design it while I'm still looking for a job. And then somebody sees that website and says, you designed that website? Can you design one for me? Then you see a job. Then in, in one month, what you would have earned in one year comes to you in business. And you, you immediately go register a business name and you do all of that and bam, you were thinking this way. Well, because you prayed in the spirit, the perfect will of God is what was prayed by the Spirit on your behalf. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? That's how I came to Kenya. You know, I was, after COVID, I said, God, how, how did we, even though it wasn't outrightly that we missed it in covenant life, the word God gave us for the year, uh, uh, we realized why he now gave it to us after COVID. It applied directly to COVID. So God had been preparing us for COVID as, as a church. However, I didn't um, I didn't know that something like that terrible was going to happen. And that's unusual for me as a prophet. And a lot of other people didn't even expect it. And when, we, when it came, a lot of us felt convinced that it was going to be a few weeks, like the government was saying, it lasted practically two years. So I felt like there was, you know, like, like we could have known more. So I, I went to pray about COVID and about what next. So I just went, got a hotel room, knelt down, prayed in the spirit. He said, Father, I consecrate myself to your will, you know. I apologize. I, I'm sorry that I felt like we were sleeping when COVID came. Now I yield to you, Holy Spirit, to pray out the will of God. And so I began to pray in the Spirit. And then God said, Arise, it's time to go to Kenya and, and begin what I have told you your ministry and destiny will be about. And I'm telling you, that's what led to this. But that's not what I went to pray about. But that's what the Spirit was praying about. Glory to God. It's still in line with what I was desiring, but it was the accurate prayer. If I, I didn't, I didn't mention Kenya once. I didn't say, "Oh God, let this Kenya door open." I was saying, "Lord, the next thing." But I didn't know what it was, and I prayed in the Spirit, and the Spirit was saying, "Kenya, Kenya," before God. And then when I when I prayed through and broke into peace, God spoke to me and said, "The nation of Kenya is ready to go." Praise God. I have a, a, a teaching series called Maximizing the Ministry of the Holy Spirit. I want to encourage you to get that audio teaching series and, and listen to it. You will, you will get a lot more information about, about praying in the Spirit. So let's quickly move to the other ones. There's another kind of prayer called the prayer of supplication. And I'm, 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 I'm putting this in the early stages of this list because I want to get them, get through them and then go into a lot of the ones that are now more um, standard. But the prayer of supplication is a prayer, so the word supplicate or to, to supplicate is to plead, all right, to plead. 
God is our Father. And there are times when what you are you are, you are expressing to God how you feel about a situation. And it is, it is right. And it may not be, you may not have a scripture for it. <laughs> you may not have a, a particular verse for it. And so, you don't even know if what you are asking for is right. But you are coming before God, please hear this, and you are pouring your heart out to your father. It's a, it's a very unusual kind of prayer. Most of the praying you are going to hear us talk about prayer of faith. But it's a prayer of you pouring your heart out to your father. And there is a place for that. Sometimes you're just saying, God, help me. Help I'm, I'm, I'm worn out. I'm fed up. I'm worn out. I just help. <laughs> the help can come in different ways, but Lord, just help. I've had to pray those prayers sometimes. You know, and I didn't even know what to pray again. I said, God, I just, I just need you to step in right now and help. Oh, hallelujah. A man of God I'm going to give you my example because sometimes these things there's a scripture that I like to use. It says produce, that's uh, Isaiah 41 verse 21. Produce your cause, saith the Lord. Bring forth your strong reasons, saith the king of Jacob. And while this can apply in different ways, but there is a place where you come before God and you say, God, look at what happened. And I would really like for this to be the case. And But in such situations, is it because you're not coming from a premise of a promise. That would be like in the case of the car, somebody coming to me and saying, Pastor Noel, I don't know if you said you're going to give a car or not. But... For these reasons, these strong reasons, for these reasons, this and this and this and this, I really need a car. Now, that person cannot live there and say, I believe I have received the car. You don't have a promise. But he can hear me. And I can say, okay. Or I can say, no. I have other plans. I'm not giving you a cup. See, that's a prayer of supplication. You can't say, well, his word is yea and amen. There's no word. There's no promise. So if he promised it to you, you don't, you don't come praying a prayer of supplication. You, you, you claim that by faith. You pray a prayer of faith and claim that. We're going to talk about a prayer of faith or a prayer of petition. Petition for what is yours already. So let me give you an example in my own life. Um, when I, when I, got married, my wife uh, and I began to uh, uh, when we decided to have children so I remember a prophet of God prophesied and said your wife is pregnant and she's pregnant with a girl so we went and checked and it was true she was pregnant um, so it was prophetic and the information was that it was a girl. And I had a confirmation in my spirit. Like I said, prophets are not to lead you, but they are to guide, they are to confirm what you already have. So I had a confirmation in my spirit. I knew that it was true. So I was driving to work a few days after that, and I just started talking to God. I said, God, <clears throat> personally, I would like a girl, a, 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 a girl, personally. But for the sake of my wife, see strong reasons. For the sake of my wife, I married into a different tribe from my tribe. So there was already some. Uh, uh, it wasn't so clean, so clean, you know. It wasn't. There's was already some misgivings, you know. People watching out to see. I felt that way. I felt that there was there was not yet a full embrace of her. And. 
in my culture, the male child is uh, 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 like you, you must have a male child, at least have one male child. Then you can have 10,000 girl ch children, but you must have a male child. So I said, personally, I don't care about that. I would even prefer a girl as a first child because they tend to, you know, most of you that have girls as first, they're usually more responsible. They learn to start helping their mother in the, in the kitchen. They start taking care of their younger ones early. And they grow up responsible and ready to, you know, uh, uh, take on life early. Um, I said, but for the sake of my wife and the fact that she still needs to be embraced, I said, I would rather she have a, a male child. And after that, female children, I don't mind. But if she has a female child, then there will be an apprehension. And we plan to have just two biological kids. There will be an apprehension. The next one has to be a male child. There will be a lot more pressure. And I said, if that's what you want, no problem. But I would prefer. See, that's supplication. I'm pleading my case. I'll prefer if this is uh, the first one is a male child. And I was driving. I was on a Jew road in a uh, uh, part of Lagos. And God said to me, right, there, right in the car, God said to me, I have heard you and it will be a male child. His name will be David and you shall, you shall call him David for he will lead his generation. And I, I think I either reversed immediately and went to talk to my wife or I, it was after work that day. I went and I said, sweetheart, guess what? It's going to be a <laughs> boy, another girl. It turned out exactly that way. A man of God um, prayed many, shared this testimony many years ago. There was back then a lot of uh, killing of Christians in the north of Nigeria. And that was where his church was based back then. His main church was in the north, in Kaduna. And, and he was, they came and gave him a report. In one of those times when the Muslims went uh, uh, on riot, and one of his key members was killed. And the person who killed that member was a very uh, well-known anti-Christian person. Now, this, is, this might be controversial for a lot of people, but this was his testimony. And some people find, wonder where to place this. That's where the prayer of supplication comes in. So this person who, you know, this person killed, this person that was well known for his antagonism towards Christians, was the one that was responsible for the death of this member of his. He said when he heard it, his heart, he said, Pain like you never can tell. The deep sorrow and pain. Not only that this person died, but that this godless man was able to facilitate the death of this person. And as a pastor, if you have ever lost a member, it's a terrible feeling. A terrible feeling. And... He said, God, with tears in his eyes, a heart of sorrow, said, God, I don't know what to do. But let me just say, I won't be happy if this man is not penalized for this. I won't be happy if this man does not suffer for this thing that happened. God is sovereign. <laughs> These are the, you know, these are great areas, but God is sovereign. The next day, that man died. Mysteriously. Nobody knew how, how he was killed. He died. Is there a scripture? Can somebody go now and say, okay, ha, one man, has, one man of God has killed people. We shall start killing people with the scriptures. <laughs> no. It was a prayer of supplication. God is sovereign. Kenneth Higgin, of blessed memory, tells us another story that I will use to wrap this up. And he said one of his members, who was a major part of his ministry, a very important uh, person in his ministry, that was really a very important help.
for him. Was fixing some things, had an accident, fell, and basically died. The doctors were still trying to find out, trying to, you know, resuscitate him. And the doctor came out and told him, told Kenneth Hagen. Kenneth Hagen went to the hospital where they took him. Came out and told Kenneth Hagen, listen, your child, your, your, your member is gone. Just go start making arrangements, funeral arrangements. Get the family together. Start planning, planning everything. He's not coming out of this. So Kenneth Hagen said that right there, sitting outside the hospital room, he said he began to cry. He began to cry. And he said, he said, God, I need this man. I need him. And I, I don't know how to go on with this thing, on the, with this assignment you gave me without this person. I don't know what happened, but I need him. And then the guy woke up <laughs> inside there. He was restored to full health. When the guy woke up, after he had been discharged from the hospital, and again went, you know, found out from him what happened. So what happened? The guy said he died, left his body, saw his body on the bed, left, his spirit left his body, said he was drawn to the light. They always talk about the light. He was drawn to the light and he saw heaven, said it was beautiful. He said he was so happy. Some of you that have lost someone who is a believer, Listen, you, you, can, you can weep because you miss them, but never think that they are in a worse place than you are. They feel sorry for you. He said he saw heaven, and he was so glad that he was there. He came into the presence of Jesus. And Jesus said to him, you can't come in. He said, What? I've seen this. I need to come in. I said, Jesus said, no. He said, Kenneth Hagen won't let you come. Kenneth Hagen won't let you come. Then he parted the curtains and showed him Kenneth Hagen in tears, saying, God, no. He said, Kenneth Hagen won't let you come. And, well, the rest is history. He came back to life. And he, he continued to walk with Kenneth Hagin, but he wasn't too happy <laughs> to be brought back. I'll give you one more. Kenneth Hagin's wife um, developed a disease. He prayed for her, she got healed. Then he came back again. I'm sharing as much as I can remember. And then Kenneth Hagin began to pray for her. Now, this could fall under intercession because he's praying for someone else. But it's also a prayer of supplication because this is something that concerns him. He needs this woman alive. So he went before God and he began to pray. And God spoke to him. And this, like I said, these are great areas. God said, this was her time. She was supposed to die at this time. He said, but because you have asked me. See that? There's no scripture. You cannot, you, cannot, you cannot duplicate that except by simply asking God and hearing what he has to say. See, prayer of supplication is just God, God going, God in his sovereignty granting things that his people ask of him and needs to be done for them. I don't know how best to describe it, but I think the examples I've given can help. And so God said to him, based on her destiny, she's supposed to die at this time. And he said, but because you've asked me, I will grant her more life. The woman ended up living longer than Kenneth Hagin himself. And then Kenneth Hagin died before her. Praise God. So don't, don't I, 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 I shared this once earlier and I believe God, you know, allowed for that because 
as we go into these other um, kinds of prayer, don't feel boxed in. Don't feel like you can't talk to your father. If you have an issue and you know how to hear from God, know how to practice what we taught you already, what we taught you already, go before God. You can even tell God, I don't even know how to pray about this right now. Oh Lord, here is here is here are my strong reasons. They could be scripture, they could be events happening. Here are my strong reasons. And Lord, I'm asking you, you know, this and this will go wrong if this happens. This is not, and I'm asking you for this. And you hear what he has to say. If he says yes. You can walk away from there believing it is done. And if he tells you, no, I have a better plan. There are people who have prayed, like Kenny Higgins prayed for their own wives. And God said, you, you let her come home. Because it's the best thing at this time. God doesn't give us all the information. The secret things belong to him. The things that are revealed belong to us. So he doesn't give us all the information. But he's your father. So you can go before him and ask. Hallelujah. Anything. Anything. Praise God. Did you learn something? All right. It gets better from next week. Um, for those of you outside Nigeria. And then remember those of you that are in Nigeria. While we're going to be preaching because of the Grace Festival. You know, it's a message God has given me. And um, Pastor Lumi, they also will be ministering. Um, remember that... Uh, um, you can go online, go to YouTube, and I need all of you to go there and listen to the conclusion of this message um, after Grace Festival. Make sure you do that sometime during the week. All right. Father, we thank you for today, and we ask that you will help us live out what we are learning. In Jesus' mighty and precious name, amen. Hallelujah. All right, I'm going to hand over the service to your leaders to pray, to flow in the Spirit, and to minister as God will lead them. In Jesus' name. Amen.